Aloha, this is Rob Hack with another edition of Exporting from Hawaii. Today, I'm doing another exporter profile of a qualified exporter from Hawaii to Japan, and that is Diamond Bakery, uh, Kalihi's own Diamond Bakery. Today with me is Maggie Lee, the uh, Director of Sales and Marketing for Diamond Bakery. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for you. being here. Um, you told me Diamond Bakery is almost 100 years old. Is that right? Almost. 97 years. 97 years. That's remarkable. I mean, that predates um, statehood, certainly, colonial days. That goes way, way back. Right. Um, we're using the background today of Diamond Head. Mm -hmm. That's where diamond bakery gets the name, name. from is that yes. right yes and you weren't always in kalihi no we moved to kalihi in 1970s 1970s uh, when the company uh, near moss face it's like a major expansion of diamond bakery wow and so before that it was before, on king street on the king street uh cross street from times baritania that's where the current zip is located oh, wow. um, the company actually still own the land Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So the main products of Diamond Bakery are what? Crackers. Crackers. Uh, everybody know. You think about Diamond Bakery, it's like, oh, crackers. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Here's some examples of crackers um, and cookies, shortbread cookies. Um, these are fantastic. Thank you. The coconut. Anything that says Lily Koi on it, I always take, but these are really excellent products. And, Everybody in Hawaii knows these, and what I love about it is you guys are very open about having the Made in Hawaii um, logo on here, which I think our companies need to do much more of. I appreciate very much that the products are made in Hawaii. You yes. said you have a couple of new products that aren't yet on the market. Which are, which are those? Um, guava. Oh. So guava, macadamia nuts, and regular guava. Okay. So the reason we have both is some people are allergic to nuts, nuts. so oh. we have like without nuts and a with nuts, so, okay. you know, Fantastic. everybody can enjoy. Um, one of the things uh, I find very interesting about your company is that you have been working in Japan for how long, exporting to Japan? Um, over 10 years. Over 10 years. And... When you started selling your products in Japan, uh -huh. you had to make some changes to the products so that, number one, they would address the Japanese market taste. Right. But number two, they have to uh, conform to Japanese regulatory issues right. and what have you. Right. So we'll talk about some of those issues in a minute. But what I think is really interesting is that you, your company took the the recipes that were needed to be successful in the Japan market, turned them around and started using them as your main recipes for the U.S. market. Right. So which of the products now are originated as the Japanese recipe that you're using in the U.S. market? Actually, all our new products really? uh, that we developed in the last three to five years. That's fantastic. Um, I, I think that... A lot of our companies uh, here should start thinking about such a philosophy and such a strategy because the Japanese market, as you know, is concerned with shelf life. Very strict on the shelf life, on the ingredient, on the labels, and packaging, basically everything. Yeah, packaging uh, is really fantastic yeah. too. Yes. Uh, but shelf life is critical. Um, the preservatives that are allowed in Japan are very limited. Very limited. Very limited. So that's why shelf life is right. critical. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And your packaging, I know in the past couple of years, you've redone your packaging, and I think your packaging looks great. The other thing I would say, uh, we have a bag, which the bags are extremely important for the Japanese market um, because Japanese consumers are not going to buy these boxes as gifts and give them to somebody else without being in a bag. Right. Um, and so I think that th this, is, this is just great. Um, in terms of your marketing strategy mm -hmm. in Japan, you're spending quite a bit of time at trade shows there. Right. So 
You recently went to Foodex? Yeah, I just came back from Foodex. Tell us about Foodex. What, what was there and what did you learn? Foodex, uh, you know, there are like uh, many, many shows in Japan, but there's only a few that we chose to participate. Uh, first month of the year was Foodex. It's part of the DOA sponsor event. Um, they subsidize some of the costs. DOA is Department of Agriculture. Yes. Uh, so the show itself is uh, skewered to um, business buyers from institutes, from food service, restaurants, colleges, and hotels, mm -hmm. hospitality. Mm -hmm. So it's different from uh, another show that was in February, that's a supermarket show. So there, there shows in the invitation to the buyers is very specific. So depending on like who you want to target and where you want to go, you need to study like and be chosen of which show you go. Oh, okay. uh, so the payoff is totally different. Are you part of the Hawaii Pavilion at Foodex? Uh, yes. Okay. And that's that's also done by Department of Agriculture. They, yeah, they they're the manage. the sponsor of the event. Yeah, they're very good at that. Yeah. Um, so mostly Foodex is B to C. B to B to B. B to B. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, who do you feel? is coming up to sample the cookie is it at a show yeah mostly the buyers um there's a couple you know there's a supermarket buyers coming too because it's not exclusive mm. but mostly we see a lot of people from hotels especially the uh, hotels they want to target attract people from us also from hawaii mm. uh, if a hotel buys a product like let's just say they buy the original shortbread product. Uh, will they use the cookies individually, or will they give a whole box um, to? We a have options of gift pack, also for service pack. So for the hotels, they have both gift shops. They also have for service. But like us, because the pro our product is more on the premium high end, mm -hmm. so we're uh, more targeting to their gift shop. I see. Do you have any idea? Um, what is the the price of this box in Japan? If somebody went into a gift shop, what would that cost? Um, around ten to twelve dollars. Ten to twelve dollars. Yeah. And what is the street price in in Hawaii? One ninety nine, depending so, on where you go. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of that the markup though is shipping and tax, and tax tariff, and, yeah. uh, shipping. Obviously, you know the distribution company has to make money too, sure. so a lot of markup. What is the tariff, do you, do you remember, on this? Um, I think it's around 10 to 15%. That's what I would think. Yeah. Okay. And usually when um, Diamond Bakery is shipping to Japan, do you ship by air or by ocean? Combination of both. Uh, Sometimes, you know, sales get kind of unpredictable from mm -hmm. time to time. Sometimes they get a rush orders and we have to fly them out. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's in a plan, then we do it by ocean. Okay. Let's uh, stay on the subject of trade shows for a minute because I think trade shows are an important outlet for Hawaii companies Definitely. to find out what's going on in the foreign market, but particularly in Japan. Right. So you just got back from Foodex. That's about a week long, right? right. And um, the supermarket show, uh -huh. um, how was that? Um, actually, I was there last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to the Foodex. Um, the traffic is um, somewhat... Even it's not like crazy, do a lot of sampling, but a lot of business people. Um, Foodex is in Makuhari. The supermarket show is where? I think it's in Makuhari too. Also at the Makuhari. Uh, either Minnesota. Big Tokyo Big Side or Makuhari, one of the two. Mm -hmm. And there's thousands of potential buyers come through there. Thousands, right? yeah. yes. Tens of thousands. Not only from Japan. Because the show, they market to the whole Asian, actually internationally. So you see the buyers from China, you see the buyers from Vietnam, from Korea. Uh, <laughs> Have you made any contacts at these shows from other markets in Japan? Like, have you, has Diamond Bakery sold anything to Korea because you went to Foodex in Japan? Uh, we haven't, but we get a lot of interest from Korea. Um, Okay, and um, I know you've also been to Hongkyu. Hongkyu Hawaiian Fair. Yes. How did that go? Totally different, totally different event. Mm. Hongkyu is B two C. A lot of shoppers like you see the live actions, right. which is more exciting. So we, I do a lot of heavy sampling, so I can see the response from people when they eat cookies. They'll say, "Oh, oishi!" It's like, "Look, you happy." 
Yeah, and Hongqiu, they buy. Yeah. I mean, you have to ship a lot of product there ahead of yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm curious, how do you determine which inventory you're going to ship to something like that? Um, that's the benefit of having an agent. So we have an agent that we've been working with them for over 10 years. They're very experienced um, of what product you know, sells the most and what flavor sells the most. Oh, okay. uh, especially in the beginning, you know, they guide us. I'll have a discussion with them like a month before the show. We talk about which product we should sell more and which product we should bring less. Mm. Uh, and then your product will emphasize on the new flavors too. How do you um, ship product to a show that you're going to use as a sample? Is that, that's not like a normal shipment of product that's for sale. Uh, depending on the timing, if we plan well, we piggyback our samples to their regular orders. Mm. Um, if it's a um, new product, we don't have a lot of lead time, um, I just FedEx them out okay. to you, our agent. Do you pay inbound duty on the samples too? Uh, no, because yeah. it's commercial invoice, you mark the zero dollar value. Good. It seems like you're very happy with your agent. What is the name of the agent? Because some of our viewers are probably looking for an oh, agent Oh, it's called as well. CFC Japan. Right, right. Um, are there any other shows you've done besides Food X, Hankyu Hawaii Fair, the supermarket show? And Tokyo Gift Show. Oh, um, and how's that? Uh, it's very good. It's also another B2B show. So um, it's totally different from Hankyu. Um, it's manageable, um, traffic. Um, you do some work sampling. But you can't um, sell anything. You cannot sell anything, yeah. yes. Um, okay. Of all of the products you're sending, uh, the, let's say products that are available in Hawaii for sale, and then the products that are available in Japan, mm -hmm. what do you think is a difference in the tastes of the consumers? What do the Japanese customers prefer? Um, specifically for Diamond Bakery, um, it, the Hawaii market is very different from Japan. Mm -hmm. Local people, they consume crackers like daily, you know, our crackers in their pantry is readily available. In Japan, people don't, that have, don't have that kind of habit to eat crackers every day. So it's, we have to educate them on how to eat crackers. But on the other hand, cookies is like universal snack. Uh, people understand the product, easy to accept, especially shawbra cookies. They understand and it doesn't take a lot of effort to teach them how to eat because everybody knows how to eat cookies. Mm. Uh, so different strategy. For crackers, um, we have to educate our agent on how to sell. Like a graham crackers, we have to teach them, okay, um, when, you, when it's the summertime, you gotta use graham crackers to make s'more, which is not in Japanese habit. Mm. Uh, soda crackers, you know, we break it into the soup or we load it with jams and jellies, which mm. they don't eat like that. So we have to teach them adapt to their um, culture too. They like cheese, so we teach them to use soda cracker with cheese. Tea, drinking tea. Tea and the cream crackers, but they like coffee too. So we sure, always sure. do the coffee and the cream. Okay, with that we'll take a short break, and we'll be back after the break with Maggie Lee of Diamond Bakery. See you soon. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Hi, this is Rob Hack, back again at exporting from Hawaii. Our exporter profile today is Diamond Bakery here in Honolulu in Kalihi. And we have Maggie Lee, the Director of Sales and Marketing uh, of Diamond Bakery. Uh, before the break, we were going through uh, talking about the difference uh, in the taste of the Japanese market versus the Hawaii market, and then educating 
your agent, but also the consumers in Japan right. about how to actually uh, eat the, the crackers. As right. you said, cookies are pretty universal. Right. I, I would agree with that. And crackers probably come originally to the U.S. palate from Europe or the right. English are still quite popular with soda crackers. Right. Uh -huh. Um, and but you're correct. It, it, to me, I, I don't. It's not a common thing in Japan, but I would think that the Japanese consumer would like it once they tried it. Yeah, and it seems to be the kind of thing that would be very successful. Definitely. Japan. First of all, they like everything from Hawaii. Correct. And on top of that, you know, we offer a good quality product and make sure they understand um, what the product is and how they can consume. Mm. Um, when you're, your facility now in Kalihi, it's a pretty big operation. You're making lots of cookies and crackers there. Mm -hmm. Are you able to get much foot traffic from tourists that are coming there? Or do you have any retail outlet plans to be able to do that? We, we actually haven't set up any outlet yet. But it has been a topic of, for the company for years. Mm -hmm. um, I think I mentioned to you before, uh, we've been even in discussion with other companies and pushing potentially have like a clicky tour of made in Hawaii product, mm -hmm. you know, including Hawaii Chip Company, Lion Coffee, uh, Manihuri, Manihuri Mac, Chocolate. We're kind of all in one blog. Yeah. Uh, but it's a lot of um, challenges I'll say um, before we can even offer a tour. We need to address parking. Parking. Um, For sure. The timing, the translator, um, yeah. you know, you, you, you basically interrupting the production mm. if you give the tour. So like Diamond Bakery, there's a lot of steps to go through before we can even offer a quality, enjoyable tour mm. for Japanese. Of course. I just noticed that there's so many tours now that are not just Japanese, but uh, well, this is an exporting show, so we'll talk about the, the Japanese tourists. But, um, I noticed that there's so many tourists in Kaka'ako and mm. Kalihi, and they're right. walking around taking photos of the murals. Yeah, I know. Right? I just noticed that too. Um, I, I mean, it's I, I, and I noticed from reading the Japanese um, tourism brochures from the, the the tour companies that they're actively marketing those walking tours and the Segway tours and the biking right. tours. So that people can get out of the Waikiki area and explore a little bit, but it's kind of nice these little hidden murals that people are thinking. Right. And I do think that our local companies in that are, have a footprint down there in Kakak or Kalihi, what have you, um, that they could capitalize on that by sort of some Japanese signage and bringing tourists in yes. and, and what have you. Not just Japanese, of course, Canadian tourists. All tourists. Whoever's there, yeah. any tourists. But, yeah. but of course, Japanese eyes are going to gravitate towards Japanese language. That's, right. that's sort of natural. Right? Right. So if we had some Japanese signage out there, we would probably get um, more Japanese foot traffic coming in. Right. So um, one of the guests we've had on here before, Jimmy Chan, mm -hmm. um, they're doing, as you mentioned, the Hawaiian Chip Company, they have a quite an exciting um, program over there where they uh. are trying to get foot traffic coming oh. in. Um, so uh, back to Diamond Bakery. Where do you see your growth in the next few years? Um, you know, we started with only one product. Now we have over 10, 15 items in Japan. So in the future, obviously growth from the new product and a growth from the new market of the existing product. Mm -hmm. And also um, one of the key things I want to learn for the company will be the e-commerce. Mm -hmm. That's an in incredibly hot topic. Right. And then from the seminar you just had early, you know, you're talking about shoppers uh, doing the um, online shopping. The rate has grown from like 70% to 90%. Mm -hmm. So that's, to me, that's the future. Okay. As you know, we're out here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on some small islands. And right. Shipping is an issue. Right. However... You have a very good agent in Japan who's able to handle local so, stock. Right. And so a customer in Japan could order online and receive the product domestically. domestically. Yes. Is that going on now? Uh, not quite, but we're in discussion. Okay. Um, that would be a great step forward, I think, at some point. Yeah. Um, 
the product, okay. In Japan, are all of the products available or is it just a limited set? It's very limited. Limited to uh, cookies and a few crackers. And um, is there a favorite flavor? Lily Koi. Lily Koi. Uh, oh, actually, Kona coffee. I didn't bring the samples, but Kona coffee became a new favorite in oh, Japan. I could imagine. That would yeah. Be very uh, popular. But they like macadamia nuts. So anything with macadamia nuts is quite popular. Very interesting. Yeah. I don't know the data on um, nut allergies in Japan, but I assume it's the same as anywhere else in the world. Yes. Um, that would, do, do you find that you have to deal with that? Um, we do, that's why we offer two versions of the same flavor. Uh, Japanese people, especially the younger generations, almost similar to U.S. Um, consumers, they're very sophisticated. Mm. They read the labels very carefully. Um, they're really into organic, all-natural kind of uh, food, especially when they make the cook themselves. So every time when we go, we talk about you know, how we can make the label more clean, um, Stay away from preservatives, stay away from artificial flavors, artificial colors, because Japanese shoppers are very sensitive when it comes down to that. Do you feel that Japanese shoppers like seeing made in Hawaii? Does that help oh, them yes, buy? Definitely. I would think so. Yeah, everybody yeah. loves Hawaii. Made with aloha. Yes. Um, great. Let's uh, t stay on this topic, though, of we were talking earlier about using the Japanese recipes here. Right. When did your company decide that that was important? I would imagine there's some cost savings by just having sort of one general that's recipe. One of the, that's one of the main drive. Mm. To, because a um, company like us, we're still growing in Japan, even though we've been there for a few years. But um, the market size is not big enough to demand a huge production run. So by using one recipe, we don't have to carry two sets of inventory. And then we can keep the product fresh for both markets. That's really a fantastic strategy. Yeah. I, as I said, I, I hope that more companies will adopt that philosophy. You guys I'm are I'm sure a lot of companies, you know, you you, that's a part of the steps you have to go through when you, you know, export to Japan. Now, you're the director of sales and marketing for Diamond Bakery. That includes marketing in Hawaii, includes marketing in the mainland. Right. Um, what is different to you, for you? What's different about marketing outside of the United States compared to marketing inside the United States? I would say the biggest challenge is, uh, one of the biggest challenges is language. And learning the market, learning the shoppers, you know, their uh, philosophy, lifestyle, um, where do they go to shop? You know, what do they talk about on social media? In the U.S., you know, easy. You can do some research. You get a lot of reports. But in Japan, um, it's a, it's going to be a learning process for them in bakery to learn how to reach out, how to build your fan base. You know, how to grow your Instagram followers, how to grow your Facebook. You know, it's easy for pe people to say. You know, you can all post on Facebook, post on Instagram, but not that easy. Yeah, how do you reach out to Japanese? That's my biggest question, and I have to learn. Um, so, you originally came from China. Yeah. And you were a microbiologist. Yes. And you went to <laughs> UH to study microbiology, but then you changed to Market. sales and marketing. Yes. So, Diamond Bakery is lucky to have somebody like you to change <laughs> to sales and marketing from microbiology. Then... With your Chinese capability, Chinese uh -huh. language capability, have you tried marketing to China or Taiwan or Singapore, um, Hong Kong? We actually, we had a discussion. Even when I go to Japan, you know, you see buyers from China. Um, there's definitely interest in the product. Um, but the, the, the hurdle, I wouldn't say the hurdle, the challenge is the price point. Price, yeah. uh, Japanese people... Shoppers are waiting to pay for the premium for, product. Exactly. They pay for the product from Hawaii. They're waiting to pay versus in China or uh, Korea or even Vietnam. I, I actually got a buyer that's super interested in bringing the product to Vietnam. So, but I have to be upfront. I said, this is kind of price point. It would be expensive. Yeah, I don't think their shoppers are ready 
for that kind of price point. You well, know, especially for cookies right. or crackers. It's a very competitive market. Okay, um, we're almost out of time, but before we go, let's make sure uh, the audience knows how to contact Diamond Bakery. Um, wh where can they buy the product? Just in Hawaii, where could they buy the product? Anywhere. Any supermarket you go, you'll, you should be able to see Diamond Bakery product. Okay, and your website is? DiamondBakery.com. DiamondBakery.com. Uh, I suggest people sign up because we do promotions all the time. You can get a good deal. Oh, okay, great. Great, great. Okay, so with that, I'd like to say thank you, Shei She, to Maggie Lee. She is the sales and marketing director for Diamond Bakery, which is uh, producing some wonderful products here in Hawaii and having success in exporting them to Japan and hopefully beyond soon. So thanks again to Maggie, Diamond Bakery. And with that, I'm Rob Hack. I'll say mahalo from another episode of exporting from Hawaii. Thank you.